Hey, it's Ava Marie, and it's time for Sunday Gardener. I'm here with Carrie Engel of Value Farms. Hello. Hi, and we're in the section where you have ornamental grasses, and I just find these so beautiful. I love them. I mean, just this morning, just standing here, watching how the sunlight just grabs some of those, mm -hmm. and watching the bees and butterflies kind of going back and forth. And it's a great plant any time of year, but it's fantastic this time of year when those plumes are up and give, you get that extra fall color. Yeah, you were saying they're very photogenic this they time of year. This is often when they're kind of blooming and showing off their their blooms and their seeds and they just look like fall they just <laughs> add really to such good. a great uh, feel um, so what types of ornamental grasses might someone pick out so a lot of these the the penicetum or most of the ones we have out here they're the ones with the tufts on them and there are a lot of different varieties that grow from the little bunnies that just get maybe a foot high oh, to some of these bunny. taller How ones cute. It is a what a cute bunny. name yeah uh, then there's the panicum which is the one there that has the real airy grasses okay. I think we have a couple of those where do they go like this one back here it almost looks like you know you can see the seed heads there and yeah. again the way they move like so these trees, are great yeah. to feed the birds that are staying in your yard the songbirds mm -hmm. and everything but it's also great for the migrating birds mm. that they have a kind of a place to stop and they they you can keep them up all winter and uh -huh. they offer some food and they also offer some shelter for a lot of the birds um, and then cut them back in like about the first of March to get them going for next year. Yeah, that's what's neat about these. They're a perennial, so they're going to come back every year, but they can also serve as a multi-seasonal decoration. They kind of change throughout the year, which means you can leave them up all winter long. Absolutely, and again, the, the grass may be green by January, February, but it's still going to move in the wind. You're still going to have the seed heads, and it's still a good companion for other things in your yard. Mm -hmm. And then you said you can chop back in um, the spring. About, yeah, about the first of March, you want to cut back before new growth starts mm -hmm. coming up so it, it doesn't have to grow through a lot of that stuff, but it will we'll grow through about that much and mm -hmm. give you some beautiful color. And now, these would be probably best to put in the ground because it's going to protect them better. If you Absolutely. put them in a pot, they may not overwinter, you were saying? They may freeze, but I've used them before. I have some larger pots and I'll use them as a background to some mums maybe or pansies that'll give me some fall and maybe early winter color. Then I can take them out and transplant them. I'll be honest, they transplant better earlier in the season, mm. but eh, you, you kind of yeah. do what you do. You know, <laughs> I cheat a little bit. I like the flexibility. Yeah, <laughs> but they're great with some of these other plants like the Solidago, which is the goldenrod, mm. uh, this iron weed that gets really tall echinacea that we have in our gardens yeah. and early on even like black-eyed Susans. Yeah so you can add you know pops of colors with maybe some flowers but these are really the showstopper when they add so much height. I just love how they add a lot of dimension to your landscaping and and they're just kind of fun. <laughs> it's like the inner cat and coming out. The, they're yeah. beautiful. And I love the movement. It's just it's just <laughs> yeah. a fun plant to have. Yeah it's almost as tall as me. Uh, well very neat so maybe this is something you can add this fall as you're doing some planting. Uh, thanks for the tips here on Sunday right, Gardener. Thank you. <laughs>